Hello, this is a part of C programming videos on securitytube.net and this particular video is on two dimensional arrays. In this video, I will be talking more about the declaration and the programming style of, C of two dimensional arrays in C language. It will be more clear with this video the relation between pointers and arrays and how exactly these arrays are stored in the memory and if we want to program with two dimensional arrays how can we take advantage of the pointers concept to make our programs more easy and more readable you can consider two dimensional arrays as a counterpart of a two dimensional matrix so as a matrix has rows and columns two dimensional array will be stored with rows and columns as the indices so the first index will be rows and second index will be number of columns so while declaring two dimensional array it will be something like the data type whose elements will be present in that array so int grades grades is the name of the two dimensional array i will be talking about the name of the array and, and how exactly that name is stored then comes the two dimensions or two index two indices first index is rows and second index is columns so in this array declaration i am declaring first index as number of students and second index as number of subjects so my grades is an array where columns are representing number of subjects and rows are representing number of students so if my first element is some x y z then the first student has scored x y z numbers in first subject if my second element is 22 then first student has scored 22 grades in subject 2 and so on so pictorially i will show you uh, show you but first understand the way it is written so one more example can be int grades in square braces 10 phi so here there are 10 number of students or 10 number of rows and 5 number of columns so in this array total number of elements that this two dimensional array can store is 10 into 5 that is 50 so total size of this grades will be 50 and this grades will have integers in it so integers will in, in a way have pr probably 4 bytes it depends on the machine you are using if you are using a machine which contains int in 4 bytes then the total size of this grades array will be 4 for integers into 10 into 5 this much memory will be allocated when you declare int grades 10 5 where first index is rows second index is columns a pictorial representation first index is rows so number of students will be represented in as number of rows and second index is columns so number of subjects will be represented as columns so there will be 10 rows and 5 columns in our second declaration according to our second declaration now let's straight away go with a programming example let me open one file in vi editor you can use your favorite editor say 2d array i have to include standard input output so that i can use the functions present in standard input output file let me start with the main function i will declare one array of grades of say size 10 comma 5 so there are 10 rows and 5 columns now grades is an array of number of students comma number of subjects so there can be 10 students and 5 subjects accommodated in this array now in this array declaration i have used numbers 10 and 5 but in this program it is nowhere mentioned what is 10 what is 5 is 10 number of students or is 5 number of subjects or it is altogether different it's a bad practice to use such magic numbers so you should always declare such arrays as something like int name of the array grades then instead of using magic number use some number of students some readable declarations and say number of subjects and 
in preprocessor directives like in hash define define number of subjects as phi then define number of students as 10 and then instead of defining the array as 10 comma phi use these declarations like int grades number of students number of subjects now let's delete the first declaration now this line is more readable from this line itself you can easily understand that first index is number of students second index is number of subjects so rows indicate number of students columns indicate numbers of number of subjects now next step is to initialize the array how to initialize the array so let's initialize you must be knowing that comments can be written with double slash or slash asterisk to start the comment asterisk slash to end the comment so now let me use for loop for i is equal to 0 i less than number of students i plus plus always use braces for any loops that will in this particular example braces might not be required but still it's always a good practice to use braces so that your program will be more readable and clean now i have defined two loops for i is equal to 0 i less than students i plus plus for j is equal to 0 j less than students j plus plus and then i will define or initialize the array so my array name is grades grades is an array of number of students comma so grades is an array of number of students and number of subjects so let's define it something like grades of i j now this will define that first student and first subject now let me complete the program and then explain what exactly is happening i am initializing the grades to be minus one now a minus one is the least probable thing that any valid entry will have like grade cannot be minus one so i am just initializing with some least probable element and i am closing my braces i am completing my main loop as well now this is a complete program which initializes which declares the array and initializes the array with minus one now what exactly is happening in grade ij equal to minus one statement i am starting a loop for i is equal to zero i less than student i plus plus now you know that every array starts with index zero so in two dimensional arrays as well the first element will be 0 0 element the second element will be 0 1 element now if we go one slide above in this slide we have seen that number of rows are students number of columns is subjects so now this first element is 0 at student and 0 at subject so this first element is 0 1 element then this second element that is first row second column is 0 1 element always remember first index is row second index is column so if i want to mention this particular element that is third row and second column it will be 3 comma 2 that is third row and second column and so on okay now let's go to programming example again so now in this loop i have iterated my number of rows from 0 to number of students number of columns from 0 to number of subjects so my maximum element will be number of student minus 1 comma number of subject minus 1 which is in our case 9 comma 4 so our array will go from 0 0 to 9 4 and i have initialized whole array to minus 1 